Most people in life are looking for how do I make a life worth living in return with having. When a man is looking for a position, he has to record a lot of content that is openly good and unusual and different in order to stand out in the crowd today. When a person has had musical experience, he might add music behind something. When a person doesn't have a lot of time, he doesn't have a lot of time to hunt for background music. I know in my portfolios back home I do have some music that was gifted to me as a part of a very expensive course that I took for me that taught me really good video editing skills. I cannot remember the name of the course. I do remember that the fellow was local and that's why I chose him. He was in a city called Fort Wayne and that was close enough for me. I think that it was, or maybe it was Muncie. I apologize, it was a long time ago. But those skills were worthwhile to me. I really valued those skills and I really valued that I could afford at that time to purchase a very expensive software that now has been pretty much decomposed and made down to sometimes a paltry 50 or $60. I'm pretty sure that software still exists that was eight $900 that I purchased and it should still be someplace marvelously in my storage, although I would carry it with me, and then it marvelously disappeared for me. At the same time, while I was traveling during my original homelessness, after being screwed over by siblings, I literally found something placed in my vehicle, some Adobe software that I don't know where it came from. I believe that people were stealing my mail, but then they started to realize what could happen to them if they were caught in some sort of fraud with software from donated from a company to me. You see, people that want to interfere with your life will always find a way to do it. And if they can get a group of people to play a game to harm someone, they will do it. But what's fascinating about this evening's experience and earlier today's experience and the experiences that I have across the regularity of my life in this traveling time of my life and facing cybercrime of my life that happens every day, like the fact that my S key won't work, or my D key won't work, or my X key now won't work, or my dollar sign key won't work, or my three won't work, or my four of my numbers won't work, and I'm not doing any kind of hacking on me. Or I try to use my computer and all of a sudden the way that it's set up has changed. What that marvelously tells me is that someone did one of two things, or possibly both, because I'm not a computer expert in this. That they hacked my computer from an outside network, or they violently put my computer in their hands while I was sleeping in order to give themselves access. Because originally my computer that I had to reset to English, that I openly received from God's grace, was a different language. So I had to reinstate everything that I owned to this network. So the tools that are on this computer are things I downloaded and I put my name on. So when someone is on my computer, they're actually comp committing fraud because they're pretending to be me. When someone interfered with my Twitter account, I have to question, is it Twitter that wants to pick on a homeless person who's trying to get a job? Or is it the people that I'm talking to in response to what they're putting out there in Twitter accounts and media accounts as public people? You see, private citizens have the marvelous right to interact with famous people, well-off people, wealthy people, affluent people, influential people, educational people, and trainers of people through social media. After I did my interview with Bob Berg, he started doing interviews too in his own channel, very much produced like I did with him and me. I can track that timeline. I'm not saying that he took the idea from me, but I think he got the gist from me after I showed it all to him. And that was a very disciplined interview, and that's all I'm going to say about that proprietary conversation we had before we did the interview. In life and time, we have the right to say, this is how I want to be portrayed. At the same time, as a radio-oriented DJ or an interviewer, I have the right to say, I'm not going to do this ad lib with you, and here's why. In my experience of doing video editing, scripting, and trying to capture people naturally, most people muck things up. Most people are not at their best because they're trying so hard to be at their best that they're not at their best with me. Probably only twice in my lifetime have I ever had someone really deliver on time and easily with smoothness without having to be rehearsed. The one person is probably my late wife who was always willing to get a photograph because it's a part of their culture.
She was always open to being videographed because she knew it was a part of our business. And at the same time, while she was a marvelous volunteer in that work, she did benefit from the time we invested in that work because we supported a culture that's a world away from here. The second person who was excellent and who could ad-lib well without too many verbal pauses because of the brilliance of her mind is a woman that I have spent a marvelous long, long time admiring, desiring, and wanting to marry.